Hello everyone, this is the Pizza Delivery Drone Group. Uh, we have three members in our group, myself, Ashikur Rahman, and the other two members are Ajay Naidu and Edgardo Flores. Uh, we are making the presentation online today. At first I would like to discuss some scopes of our project. So our drone will be used for delivering the pizzas. Uh, pizza shop will be the main customer of our drones. Uh, so we will be developing the project uh, satisfying the requirements and uh, for example the drone will be able to carry the weight of the pizza so the motors should be really powerful and we will set a limit so that uh, we can test that if the motor is capable enough of lifting the weight or not and uh, the drone will have the automatic navigation capability so that it can reach the destination by itself and it can also come back to the uh, pizza shop by itself without any problem and the drone will also be able to sustain in the bad weather condition and also it will have a communication system so that we can send the signal to the drone and it can be operated from the ground station so in order to uh, satisfy all those requirements we will perform some tests uh, that i will be describing uh, in this presentation so mainly i will discuss about the subsystem level tests in brief this is the operational view of our project so the pizza shop will be receiving the orders from customers online and it, they will prepare the pizza and when it's ready uh, they will install the pizza inside the a box which will be atta attached at the bottom portion of the drone and the location of the pizza customer will be inserted in the microcontroller of the drone and the drone will take off automatically and it will navigate to the customer's place and it will cruise to the destination it will deliver the pizza and it will uh, receive the payments from the customer and once it receives the payment it will uh, cruise back to the pizza shop and it will automatically land by itself and it will get ready for the next delivery in this slide you can see the organizational structure it is led by the project manager and tasks are delegated to the planning manager process manager quality manager, support manager, and customer interface manager. Later on in the presentation, we will show you the responsibilities of each member. As you can see in this slide, all the positions were divided in between the three members. Ashikur was the team leader, planning manager, and process manager. So he had to ensure goals of a project were met. He had to delegate tasks, define goals, and determine mis missions necessary to achieve the, those goals as well as plan and monitor the performance of a process. AJ was the quality manager and the support manager. He oversaw all activities and tasks needed to maintain a desired level of excellence and he also coordinated, coordinated technical information of a system and educated employees on issues. Uh, myself, Edgardo Flores, was responsible for understanding and managing the customer's requirements and exp expectations of the system. As you can see in this diagram, the project started on January of 2017. All the requirements of the project were finalized within February of that same year. System requirements was also held in February and the following month was dedicated to design reviews. Within one month, all the designs all the design defects and constraints were corrected. Critical design review was held in April, and up to now, all the design parameters and reviews have been completed. All kinds of tests will be performed in, new, in the next few months, and the project will be ready for operation by the end of the year. This is a tentative approximation of the profit we can make from the, uh, from the pizza drone. Uh, if we just compare the drone delivery with the human delivery, we will see that uh, we can save a lot of money by using the uh, drone delivery 
uh, usually the pizza shops uh, hire delivery drivers for delivering their pizzas and the delivery driver needs their uh, labor cost their fuel cost and also they use a car for delivering the pizza which also increases the traffic in the road but for the for the case of the drone we don't have any expenses like that we just need the initial cost for buying the drones the drone will need a negligible amount of charging cost and also low maintenance cost so as per our estimation if we just use the drone we can save almost thirteen thousand dollar a year compared to the human delivery so here is an average uh, cost estimation of our uh, test plan so uh, the motor performance will be verified for one drone and rest of the drones performance can be assumed uh, so the, for the motor performance we have assumed that the drone uh, that the test cost will be a uh, hundred and fifty dollar and the communication transceiver and the antenna will be checked and monitored for each drone every month uh, performance verification for the 20 drones for a year of the transceiver system will be uh, twelve hundred dollar the backup battery will be installed for detecting the drone while main battery failure occurs and the installation and the battery cost for 20 drones will be one thousand uh, dollar the backup sensors will be used for detection while no contact with the drone uh, installation and sensors cost for the 20 drones will be four hundred dollar a misuse alert system will be implemented in the software uh, which will alert the company while misusage occurs so the implementation cost for 20 drones will be $200 and the overweight sensor will be in the, will be included in the drones which will stop operation of the drone while the weight limit reaches a threshold level and the installation and sensor cost for the 20 uh, drones will be $100 the insurance coverage will be applied uh, over all drones for any damage lost stolen or collision activity the insurance premium for 20 drones will be uh, $2400 for one year so initially our uh, total VVT cost was $18,000 but we were able uh, we were uh, able to reduce the cost to $5,500 after the modification of the test plan before performing the test the risk analysis is very important because from the risk analysis we can predict what type of risk we are going to have and also we can take the strategy that can that is suitable for mitigating the risk so uh, as per our analysis we have categorized the risk in some main types so there can be the structural risks for example when the weight is too high the drone may fail to lift the weight also due to the errors in the aerodynamic shape the uh, balance can be hampered the motor can stop working due to the overheat or uh, the, the increased pressure due to the weight or uh, the wind condition the software system may have bugs or errors uh, which will cause uh, the system to to be inactivated and it, it, it will lose control over the hardware the navigation system may fail when the system gets to the unusual location or when the signal level is weak the processor may fail due to the excessive pressure of the command also there can be misusage caused by the customer so based on all these risks uh, we will be planning our subsystem level test which will ensure us that uh, we have mitigated the risk possibilities so in general uh, components subsystem and the system level test will be performed uh, components and subsystem level test will be performed to ensure the successful operation of the system uh, each of the individual subsystem will be checked and verified to ensure the performance the implementation test will be performed the integration test will be uh, performed to verify the functionality of the subsystems together uh, we will also check the performance uh, overall of the of the uh, dr whole drone the weight lifting capability of the drone will be tested the navigation capability of the drone uh, will be tested automatic automatic uh, altitude control and the balancing capability will be monitored uh, the operating capability of the drone will be tested at bad weather condition uh, so we have also set the testing environment 
um, the so and also the test parameters that the drone needs to meet uh, in order to qualify for the testing so uh, the drone should be able to lift at least five pounds of weight uh, the landing capability will be monitored at the mentioned location uh, based on the destination address and the artificial wind flow will be created to observe the performance the artificial rainfall will be created uh, the battery performance of the drone will be monitored the communication performance uh, will be monitored at different locations where the signals will be low and uh, if any of the criteria of testing fails the different types of process will be implemented to measure the performance if the system fails to meet any of the test parameters the related subsystem uh, will be monitored and performance improvement process will be followed the system will be launched for operation only when uh, it passes all the test criteria so this is our overall subsystem level test plan for the structural test we will be uh, testing the fatigue and a stress test of the materials that we will be using for the chassis and the structure of the drone so to ensure that uh, the structure and the chassis is strong enough to sustain any type of situation we will perform the motor efficiency testing and also we will observe the heat generated by the motor for uh, for use over the time after integration of the motor and the controller we will perform the for monitoring their performance together we will test the navigation system by uh, taking the drones at unusual conditions and over weak signals the battery status will be checked over time uh, by checking the voltage and current level of the battery and also the charging and discharging cycle the communication system will be tested by uh, varying the signal levels uh, so that we can check that at the when the signal is weak how the uh, signal can be transmitted and if the drone is capable enough to receive the signal and extract the comments and if the system fails we will have to take any other strategy to build up the communication system and validate its performance the processor will be checked by sending the comments to the processor and observing the performance of the processor uh, for example how does it react to different comments so this is the subsystem level test plans we have up to now and we will modify our uh, test strategy depending on the condition and taking the reviews from from the peers and our instructor Hello everyone, this is Ajay Naidu. Today I am going to present the subsystem level testing of our project for structure and the software subsystems. From the reference to IVV textbook, the statement, instead of predicting what goes wrong in the system, we can think how to make the system fail in the most effective way. That is why we want to test our subsystem with adding more weight than its capability or more than what it is designed for. In this way, we actually want to know the breaking point of uh, structural design load. We design the structure to carry up to 7 pounds, but we promise our client only up to 5 pounds. Because of other external forces may act on the system, like higher wind speeds than expected. As you see in the picture, addition to the frame, propellers, a holder is attached to the drone to carry the pizza box. The drone structure is designed to carry up to 7 pounds but as, as I said earlier the limit is set to 5 pounds. Next slide. We are planning to uh, test our subsystem by using the above conditions in the table. We are going to carry weight of 0 to 7 pounds with and without the flight time. We test with each and every condition. For example, if you look at the condition of carrying weight of uh, 3 pounds its speed of 10 miles per hour and uh, setting the wind speed of uh, 0 to 10 miles per hour with flight time of 5 minutes. And again, uh, taking uh, another example, uh, with weight of 5 pounds at speed of 40 miles per hour and a flight time of 20 minutes and with 0 to 10 miles per hour uh, wind speed. And the subsystem is tested in a way uh, it has to satisfy to each and every condition in order to build sustainable system. 
the failure detector records the subsystem failure uh, is occurred. The emergency location sensor is also provided to locate the drone if any unusual uh, behavior from the system is resulted. Next slide. The main risk in the software subsystem are data hacking and the uh, hardware controller hacking and the software bugs which appear and uh, result in failure of the system and sometimes the system may go into uh, the unauthorized uh, people. The data hacking and uh, hardware controller hacking has become very common because when one door closes the hackers are finding a new door or a new way to hack the systems. Software bug is an error, uh, failure or fault in a computer program that causes uh, to produce an incorrect result or uh, unusual uh, behavior of the uh, software system. Next slide. For our project, uh, we are using the SEL4 operating system which is anti-hackable -hack and using uh, AES 256-bit storage encryption to secure uh, the system from hacking. The software testing will be done at subsystem level and the integration phase of the software subsystem. Next slide. We are using two uh, methods of testing in uh, software testing, uh, subsystem testing. Uh, those are functional and non-functional testings. In functional testing, uh, the unit testing is a level of software testing where uh, individual components of the software are tested. This will validate each unit of the software. After the passing of unit testing, uh, here comes the integration testing. It's a software development process which makes the units combined and uh, tested in multiple ways. Basically, it's a com combination of uh, integration of uh, the individual components which are uh, tested in the unit testing level and uh, and those are combined to test in multiple ways coming to the system uh, testing it's done after the integrated testing is passed and make sure the software system is work, working according to according to the requirements and uh, basically it's a verification uh, of the software system the next step would be acceptance testing where the software is tested for the validation Coming to the non-functional testing, uh, the performance testing is done to uh, test the capability of uh, software in all extreme conditions and uh, later on it released to uh, users for the usability testing and uh, it is released to uh, it is it is basically the releasing of uh, software to the users and detect the defects with set of uh, software teams uh, supervision. It's basically like a peer review or uh, open source testing and later on uh, we are going to compatibility testing and which is uh, which is very important phase because of the hardware and software integration is needed and software is a controller for the function of whole drone uh, and it's needed uh, as per the requirements so here is the qualification test plan of our project uh, qualification is a process by which we can determine the project or its subsystem uh, together and also individually performing their assigned tasks accordingly. The project altogether should meet the needs of the stakeholders. All the requirements need to be satisfied before starting the process of verification and validation. For the project of pizza delivery drone, we have determined the following process for the qualification. Uh, we have divided the process into five phases. So at the first phase, uh, we are selecting the subsystems and components that need to be verified and validated. At the phase two, for each subsystem mentioned in phase one, we are considering the task which it, which it has to perform successfully. Uh, at the phase three, a uh, specific testing process is mentioned for each subsystem. At phase four, a threshold value has been fixed for testing. When the subsystem is able to perform its task within this range, we consider the subsystem is working properly. And at phase five, 
uh, if the component passes the test by achieving the values mentioned in the phase 4 we will consider that the operation of subsystem uh, or the component is validated in case it fails we will modify or change the component and repeat the process from phase 3 for that specific subsystem so here is the qualification test plan of our project uh, qualification is a process by which we can determine the project or its subsystem uh, together and also individually performing their assigned tasks accordingly the project all together should meet the needs of the stakeholders all the requirements need to be satisfied before starting the process of verification and validation for the project of pizza delivery drone we have determined the following process for the qualification uh, we have divided the process into five phases so at the first phase uh, we are selecting the subsystems and components that need to be verified and validated at the phase two for each subsystem mentioned in phase one we are considering the task which it which it has to perform successfully uh, at the phase three a uh, specific testing process is mentioned for each subsystem at phase four a threshold value has been fixed for testing when the subsystem is able to perform its task within this range we consider the subsystem is working properly and at phase phase five uh, if the component passes the test by achieving the values mentioned in the phase 4, we will consider that the operation of subsystem uh, or the component is validated. In case it fails, we will modify or change the component and repeat the process from phase 3 for that specific subsystem. So for the drone's design, uh, we are planning to design in such a way that it should be capable of uh, delivering the pizza and uh, it should be strong enough to pull up the weight of uh, uh, two pizzas and a soda which will which will which will be around uh, five pounds so so these kind of drones aren't available in the market and uh, it's not typical or commonly used one so we have to design a drone uh, that should satisfy the requirements and uh, the performances are increased based on the needs. So the application needs enhanced performance from the drone. Uh, we need some extra components and also some customized models of common components. So we need some specialty type of uh, components. Uh, so based on the needs and expectations, we have created a product breakdown structure uh, for drone which you can see on the right side uh, it shows like a quadcopter as a system and the subsystems are structure control unit power supply uh, and additional devices uh, so if you come to structure uh, we have components chases uh, metal rods motor propellers and uh, same as uh, and control unit we have signal receiver onboard computer electronic speed controller flight controller navigator and uh, the power supply has a battery system solar system charging system and additional devices are cameras sensors and may we may increase uh, the number of additional devices in future according to the needs at that time uh, so so basically we will follow the hierarchy uh, which is shown in uh, this PBS. The documentation we used for the project is as follows. We used the requirements verification matrix which helped us verify the requirements met the criteria we intended for it to meet, for each requirement to meet. We also used the requirements by directional traceability matrix which helped us see the traceability from use case to requirements and from requirement to use case. These two were helpful when we create the requirements document. We, uh, with these two documents, we knew if we had too many requirements or if we were missing some requirements. We also used the cost benefit analysis um, this is a systematic approach to estim estimating the strengths and weaknesses of alternatives. 
It is used to determine options that provide the best approach to achieve benefits while preserving savings. It is also known as a systematic process for calculating and comparing benefits and costs um, based on a decision. Um, last but not least, the concept of operations is a document describing the characteristics of a proposed system from the viewpoint of an individual who will use that system. It is used to communicate the quantitative and qualitative system characteristics to all stakeholders. In this slide, we're going to be showing you the Requirements Verification Matrix, or RBM. The Requirements Verification Matrix allows you to list all requirements and determine in which stage it will be necessary for the system to function properly. It also helps distinguish each requirement with the level the requirements should go under within the system. So as you can see, we have a row that says uh, the requirement number, uh, traceability, requ the requirement itself, the verification stage, which is divided into definition, design, implementation, integration, and qualification. We have three levels, one being component, subsystem, and system. And then we have the last last uh, row that has all the comments of the requirement. So here is where you can see which stage, which verification stage the requirement should be under, and as well as which level the requirement should be under. The requirements by directional traceability matrix is a document that links requirements throughout the validation process. The purpose of the requirements traceability matrix is to ensure that our requirements defined for a system are tested in test programs. The traceability matrix is a tool both for the validation team to ensure that requirements are not lost during the validation project and for auditors to review the validation document. As you can see here, we have two blank spaces between each function and use case. Uh, one is to test for forward traceability from the use case to function, and one from the, to check for backward traceability from function to use case. Failure mode and effect analysis is a step-by-step -step approach for identifying all possible failures in a design, a manufacturing process, or a product. Failures are any errors or defects, especially ones that affect the customer. Effects analysis refers to studying the consequences of these failures. Failures are priori prioritized according to how serious their consequences are, how frequently they occur, and how easily they can be detected. The product of these three items creates a risk priority number, or RPN, which is used to determine where the highest risk is. The purpose of the FMEA or FEMA is to take actions to eliminate or reduce failures, starting with the highest priority ones. Failure modes and effects analysis also document current knowledge and actions about the risk of failures. It, this is for use in continuous improvement. Ideally, FEMA begins during the earliest conceptual stages of design and continues throughout the life of a product or service. In this slide, you can see three three types of charts. There is one for severity, detection, and occurrence. As you can see on the far right column for all of these three charts, there is a, there is a rank. Um, the higher the rank for each, for each chart, the higher the RPN or, or risk priority number. This number is generated when multiplying each rank of each, each chart. So as you can see in the occurrence chart, if you eliminate failure, which means there's no, there, it's impossible that it will occur, your rank is very low, which, which helps out your RPN a lot. In the detection, um, the rank is based off on how efficient the, the detection method is. Again, the lower the number, the lower the RPN. And then the severity uh, chart is how severe the, the failure will be if it occurs. A checklist is a list of common defects 
introduced while developing a task. A defect is any occurrence of an error or omission that is injected into a product during its life cycle that requires rework. It is important to create a checklist in order to use a more structured approach to the review process and improve value from the defect control gained from the checklist. Using a generated checklist to review ensures that the reviewer is looking for the identified defects and is signing off that they have been addressed correctly and completely, then substantially improving the results and value gained in the review by the reviewer and the author. The goal to be attained with the checklist is the overall increase in the level of quality. Catching a defect earlier in the product lifecycle means less time and resources spent later on in the life cycle to fix a defect. Since reworks are later phases, at later phases are much more difficult to perform. In the review process, checklists are used to list or categorize the multiple defects that are found in deliverables. When a defect is found, it is entered into an overall defect log. A defect log shall be used concurrently with any checklist in the review process. The checklist is used to tell you that you have a defect but not the exact nature of the defect. As soon as you find a defect with the checklist, it should be immediately logged into your defect log to enhance the traceability of the defect tracking process. As you can see here, we have a slide that shows a, def uh, a checklist. In the left column, we have our category, um, we have our criteria description, and then we have our sections from, in this case, the CONOPS. So we're checking for grammar, consistency, ambiguity, and completeness. And there's different, different cri criteria to fit those categories. Now we, we check every, every section in the CONOPS and come up with a total, total defects identified. From then, we go to the, to the defect log and we enter those there. I will be talking about the defect log in the next slide. As you can see in this slide, we're going to show you the defect log. Uh, these defect logs are used to track log defects and detail the rework completed to fix the defects to create a new version of the product. If you have multiple versions of a document, there should only be one defect log to track all the defects found. As you can see in the, in the log, we have different columns for document component name, defect type, injection and removal phase, fixed cost, and defect description. In the first column, the, um, that's where you input the document name. You put the type of defect. Uh, it's incomplete, incorrect, not clear, ambiguous, inconsistent, uh, or interface and logic, or any other uh, defect type you might have. In the injection phase is where you put where the defect was injected. It might, it might have been that you entered the defect in the CONAPS and didn't catch it in the CONAPS review, but uh, caught it in the in another type of review. Um, that's where the removal phase comes in, and that's where you put where you where you cut the, the the defect. You might not have cut it after several reviews. In the fixed cost, you enter the minutes it took you to fix the defect, and in the defect description, you go more into the details of the, of the defect type. So coming to the systems post development VVT activities, we have three sections out here: production, uh, use maintenance, and disposal. So in production, uh, uh, the completed system uh, is divided in appropriate uh, quantities, and in the use maintenance phase, uh, it operates the system in its environment in order to accomplish intended functionality and maintains the system uh, to correct any defects. And in the disposal phase, it proper uh, the basic thing of uh, the disposal phase is uh, it proper it, it will make the system properly uh, disposed and uh, it's element upon the completion of uh, its life. And we have uh, chosen uh, two main important uh, concepts from each of these phases. Uh, come in production, uh, we have uh, choose verify quality of incoming subsystems and uh, components and uh, verification of marketing and production forecasting which are uh, very very important to our project and uh, next in uh, use maintenance uh, we have chosen uh, to develop a IVVT plan for system maintenance and conduct engineering peer reviews for system maintenance 
and uh, in the disposal we have chosen uh, develop uh, developing the ivvt plan for disposal program and uh, conducting the engineering peer review for disposal program so we will uh, look more descriptive uh, uh, into this uh, in the further slides so in this activity uh, we are trying quality of incoming uh, components and subsystems the main objective of this activity is to verify uh, that incoming materials components or subsystems meet specifications before they are uh, produced as a system so the materials components and subsystems to be incorporated into a product uh, or a system uh, must be checked before they are integrated into the system since the system depends strongly on the quality of its parts the objective of the checking uh, the received components and subsystems is to verify that they meet the required specifications so this activity will reduce cost uh, since faulty uh, systems detected further along the production line uh, would lead to expensive corrective action so the objective of this concept is attained by uh, subsystem testing procedures as described in the BIT plan of our project. So coming to this concept, verifying the marketing and uh, production forecasting. Uh, so the main objective of this activity is to verify the marketing and uh, production forecasting of the manufacturing organization. And uh, the marketing and production forecasting is a mechanism to predict the sales of products and systems and uh, to plan future production operations so the purpose of the vvt actions is to verify that uh, these forecasts are performed under a sound process and produce reliable and accurate results so for the automated drone pizza delivery system we are planning to forecast sales parallel to production at, and at this stage the prototype is a marketing material so the time horizon would be uh, days per week and evaluation method will be according to the client's understanding so this this concept is uh, really important in our production phase because uh, our project success will be determined by the sales of it so the main purpose of uh, the system use in maintenance maintenance phase uh, is to operate the system in its actual anticipated user environment and to fulfill its intended purposes during this phase, the system requires a variety of VBT activities as routine operations uh, performed either automatically by the system or uh, manually by the operation, operators or maintenance uh, personnel. So such activities are conducted as scheduled uh, preventive maintenance or whenever problems occur. The appropriateness of uh, such maintenance operations should be verified prior to actually conducting any maintenance activity. So in addition, uh, the proper behavior of the systems undergoing maintenance uh, should also be verified. So coming to the activity uh, below, uh, conducting the engineering peer review on system maintenance process. So the main objective of this activity is to conduct an ongoing uh, engineering peer reviews to verify the effectiveness of the system maintenance process and engineering peer reviews are conducted periodically to verify the effectiveness uh, of the system maintenance process uh, and the peer review should be based on a status report summarizing the maintenance activities and the overall condition of the system so in general the objective of peer review team is to evaluate based on available information so whether the system is maintained in a manner acceptable to the all uh, stakeholders and in the most cost effective way so in the activity uh, developing bbt plan for system maintenance uh, the main objective uh, is to plan the bbt activities during the system uh, use and maintenance phases so the longest system life cycle phase is normally uh, use and maintenance phase so during this phase all necessary uh, bbt activities are accomplished to sustain the fielded system in the most cost effective manner possible during this phase modifications and product improvements are usually implemented to update and maintain the required levels of uh, operational capability as the technologies and users desires evolve 
So the VVT plan for the system maintenance is prepared according to the risk matrix and the cost analysis prepared in the development phase of our project. So in this phase of uh, system disposal, uh, the pur purpose of the system disposal phase is to properly dispose of the system and its elements upon the completion of its useful life. So during uh, this phase, system should be dismantled and partially or completely recycled and shredded. And finally, toxic materials must be neutralized. Most systems have no formal disposal requirements. However, systems with hazardous materials or other safety issues have specific uh, disposal requirements related to environmental pro protection, levels of uh, materials recovery and methods of disposal. So the following two concepts are used in this phase for our project. So in this uh, disposal phase, the main activity is uh, developing a VVT plan for disposal program. Uh, so the main purpose of this activity is to prevent any harm or misuse by the system after the, its intended use by unauthorized people. Uh, so the main components of that uh, that needs to be dismantled are software, power supply, and the database. According to the standards uh, from above components, the VVT is needed to be created for accuracy in uh, disposal phase. So in this activity of conducting engineering peer review for disposal uh, program, so the objective of this activity is to utilize uh, engineering peer review to assess whether the ongoing system disposal process is performed uh, in accordance to the system's disposal process plan and uh, according to the applicable uh, environmental and uh, health regulations and policies. So the engineering peer review may be used uh, to assess a system's disposal process as it is performed and should be an ongoing verification process conducted throughout the system disposal phase. So the basis for the peer review should be the system disposal process plan as well as the appropriate documents uh, summarizing the ongoing disposal process, for example, certificates of disposal and or disposal audit trail. So such, a, such peer reviews may be conducted on a cyclical basis covering uh, different topics each time. So to summarize our plan, uh, we have uh, covered the systems engineering tool for IVVT and risk matrix, cost analysis, risk analysis, requirement analysis, and uh, RPTM, RVM, and the, uh, and the design and the requirements are carried out parallelly to prevent the risk of failure in implementation. Uh, the subsystem and the components testing is designed with a built-in test plan to verify the quality of subsystems. And again, a VVT is designed after the integration of uh, subsystems to test the system in the intended use of environment. So the main lessons and the main concepts we have uh, learned from this project are IVVT uh, methods for systems, uh, engineering systems, and how exactly the VVT plan could save the projects from failure in, in the real time and a deeper more learning and usage of tools can help the systems for the further development. Thanks everyone for your time for the presentation. Please place your questions, comments or suggestions uh, in the comment section below provided. Thank you.